Well, good morning, everybody, and uh, thank you for joining me at the uh, port of Long Beach, where we're joined not just by representative of the ports uh, of Long Beach, but also the port of Los Angeles. I'm uh, United States Senator Alex Padilla, joined by uh, some of my colleagues in public service and local leaders as well, United States Congresswoman Nanette Barragan, uh, <coughs> Mayor Robert Garcia, California State Transportation Agency Secretary David Kim, and uh, from ILW Local 13, Ramon Ponce de Leon, among others. Uh, you'll hear from the, mem the individuals I just uh, named, but others are on standby to answer any technical questions should the need arise. Uh, I want to begin by thanking David Labatik from the Port of Los Angeles and Steve Neal from the Port of Long Beach for the very informative briefing that they just provided for uh, myself and the other elected leaders here, along with Secretary Kim uh, and uh, the labor groups that are here. As we all know, and I think as the world has come to more fully appreciate in recent weeks, the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles are critical nerve centers in the global supply chain. 40% of America's container ship traffic runs through the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach alone. Now, uh, container traffic has recently been uh, uh, snarled, uh, but I think it's a uh, reminder of how the logistics and challenges that uh, we are experiencing are not just impacting us here locally, but frankly, around the world. In Georgia, the Port of Savannah is breaking records for their crowding of ships. Empty shipping containers are piling up in Australia while they're running low across Asia. The global ongoing pandemic has exposed the importance and the urgency of modernizing our port infrastructure. And uh, shipping backlogs have also created ripple effects for businesses, for consumers, and for local communities. Now, uh, in my first year as a member of the U.S. Senate, I've been proud to advocate for the funding and resources uh, that our ports need, including securing investments in the historic bipartisan infrastructure bill that President Biden will sign this coming week. The bill will invest $17 billion in ports and waterways across the country to help build resiliency in our supply chain for decades to come. It will decrease the environmental impact of ports with funding for electrification and zero emission technologies. And it will create worker training programs to support the essential workers, federally government recognized essential workers who keep our goods moving. And I want to take a moment just to acknowledge the essential workers that have been essential since long before the pandemic, have stepped up throughout the pandemic, and are key to the future of goods movement in our nation. Despite the challenges of COVID, they kept showing up to work. But I'm also working closely with state and federal officials to uh, solve the issues of here and now, to help families that are preparing for the holidays and wondering if uh, the gifts they're hoping to buy are sitting on these container ships behind us, while also addressing the environmental justice impacts of uh, uh, increased activity uh, that's having on some of the surrounding communities. I recently had a conversation on precisely this issue with Secretary Buttigieg when we're advocating both for the resources that California ports need but also to ensure the state, local government, uh, and community-based organization partnerships necessary to ensure that we're meeting these challenges in a balanced way. We need to make sure that the United States Department of Transportation continues to actively engage with the California State Transportation Agency to expand port capacity, keep operations going around the clock, and speed up the funding from the bipartisan infrastructure bill. It's not just about speeding up the funding, but accelerating the benefits of the investments called for in the bipartisan bill, while also advocating together, Congresswoman, for California's ports in the Build Back Better Act. We have a historic opportunity to electrify, to decarbonize, and promote environmental justice in our supply chains. 
and all of these leaders standing here together will continue to collaborate uh, to do just that and in so doing address both short-term and long-term difficulties impacting the supply chains. So again, I want to thank everybody who stepped up during the COVID-19 pandemic, especially the essential workers who have taken on extra shifts to unload containers and drive goods across the country. Before introducing the next speaker, let me just offer a few words in Spanish as well. Uh, les quiero dar las gracias a todos por estar aquí con nosotros en los puertos de Los Ángeles y Long Beach. Como todos saben, los puertos de Los Ángeles y Long Beach son centros críticos, críticos de la cadena de suministro global. El 40% de tráfico de carga de los Estados Unidos entra por estos dos puertos. Y en este momento, el tráfico está enredado por problemas que se presentan en todo el país y en todo el mundo. La pandemia mundial ha puesto un enfoque en la importancia y la urgencia de modernizar la infraestructura de transportación y de los puertos de nuestro país. Las inversiones históricas uh, en el proyecto de ley bipartidario que va a ser firmada por el presidente Biden es una gran oportunidad de lograr esto. Esta medida invertirá 17 mil millones de dólares en modernizando los puertos uh, y las vías navegables en nuestro país. Reducirá el impacto ambiental de los puertos también y creará programas de entrenamiento para apoyar a los trabajadores esenciales. Pero también queremos asegurar uh, la, co la colaboración de líderes estatales y federales para seguir resolviendo los problemas cuando se presentan, no solo hoy en día, sino en el futuro también. Uh, y les damos gracias a los trabajadores esenciales uh, que siguen trabajando día y noche para mantener el movimiento de la mercancía del país. Thank you again for being here with us. Let me introduce my colleague from the House of Representatives, Congresswoman Nanette Barragán. Thank you, Senator, and thank you uh, to Mayor Garcia and everybody involved here at the ports that are working day in and day out to address uh, the supply chain issues and the backlog uh, that we've seen here. Um, as was mentioned, the $17 billion uh, for infrastructure is going to be critically important for the ports here. That will help us be able to build the infrastructure that's long overdue. Let's remember, this is a historic investment in infrastructure, and this is a historic investment in ports. And this couldn't come at a better time where we have the supply chain issues, where we have this backlog. We know it was caused by COVID and we saw the supply chain start being stretched because of that. And so today uh, we were able to meet with uh, those at the port here to tell us how, uh, what we need to do and, and how we need to, to make sure that when these dollars are being released in Washington, that we are making sure that, that Los Angeles and here the San Pedro uh, Bay Ports Complex is at the front of the line. Um, we have had record breaking uh, numbers of the volume that's coming in and out. We have more demand for goods than we have ever seen. And of course, coming up along the holiday period. Um, so know that this is such a critical time to have this uh, bipartisan infrastructure bill done and delivered on Monday will be signed into law. Uh, we know the administration has also talked about fast tracking some of these dollars, uh, which we really, really need. Um, but we also need to think about the environmental impacts. And so one of the things that we got to make sure to continue to do across the finish line is get the Build Back Better Act through. That's a bill that will have dollars into something I've been working on since uh, my last term, a Climate Smart Sports Bill that will allow investments in zero emissions technology. So when you talk about increasing 24-7 operations, uh, we hear from the community the impact it's having. We've got to make sure we're doing that as clean as possible to invest in the zero emissions technology. And that's something that we're committed to doing along with things like environmental justice grant. And those dollars are in the Build Back Better uh, portion of the bill. And so I'm uh, happy to be here today and um, happy to be here with a team of of players who's collaborating to make sure that we're addressing the backlog, to make sure we're addressing the supply chain issues, and to make sure that we are going to get our fair share and be at the front of the line uh, when these dollars are allocated. And with that, I am proud to introduce the California State Transportation Agency Secretary, David Kim.
después puedo hacer algo en español. Gracias. Thank you very much, Congresswoman and Senator, for bringing us together. Thank you for joining us. The passage of the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act is a big deal for California. This will enable us to make once in a generation investments to improve, upgrade, and modernize our transportation infrastructure, including critical freight and goods movement infrastructure. You heard the number, 17 billion for ports. Much of that funding will be going out through, a, through competitive grant programs, discretionary grant programs. And I'm here to tell you that we at the state of California, in partnership with our uh, local partners like the ports of LA, Long Beach, and many others, we are ready to aggressively go after these grant funds. We're going to have to compete with others around the country, but we plan to do well and we plan to get our fair share of discretionary grant funds from the federal government. Now, at the state level, we have been going all out to address a series of short-term as well as long-term uh, actions to address the current situation. On a short-term basis, uh, through the Department of General Services, we are identifying state-owned land that can be used as staging areas for containers. We know that's a really important step forward. Uh, City of Long Beach has stepped up uh, on that front. And then also on the transportation side, through Caltrans, we are, 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 uh, sorry, we are identifying priority freight routes that can be considered for higher weight limits on a temporary basis, which will allow us to move cargo faster and, and, uh, and better. And so we're doing a series of things on a long-term basis, in addition to the infrastructure bill we talked about, we just entered into a historic strategic partnership with the U.S. Department of Transportation to move forward on a program of projects, freight-related projects, that could be considered for innovative finance programs through the U.S. Department of Transportation. Why is this important? It's important because for the first time ever, the state of California is taking a holistic comprehensive approach to moving a program of projects because quite frankly the way we did it in the past was to do a series of one-off projects in piecemeal fashion all of that changes with this agreement we're taking a new step forward and a completely new approach in partnership with the federal government so thank you for being here and with that i would like to now introduce the mayor of long beach robert garcia Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And I want to just first uh, just begin by, of course, uh, welcoming uh, the senator to, to Long Beach. I want to thank Senator Padilla for uh, gathering folks and talking about these critical issues. I uh, particularly want to thank uh, Congresswoman Baragan and Mr. Secretary uh, and all the, um, the leaders here, um, uh, workers that are working on what really is a uh, a national priority, which is uh, the supply chain uh, challenge we have in front of us. So th there's two things I think are important. The first is we're here to uh, work with the senator to ensure that the infrastructure plan um, is fully adopted and fully implemented, uh, first and foremost, with a with a emphasis on ports and goods movement. Uh, we know there's going to be a historic amount of investment happening that's going to go into the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. Uh, we're talking about rail coming into the ports. We're talking about uh, sustainability projects. We're talking about ensuring uh, that we have um, infrastructure around bridges and roads uh, and supporting terminals. And so all of this is really critical that's in this bill and an opportunity for us to grow uh, here in, in Long Beach as well as in, in Los Angeles. So we are ready. Every single part of this nation should want to see investments into the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles. When 40 percent of America's goods are coming in and out of these ports, uh, the folks in places like Oklahoma and Ohio uh, and Pennsylvania should be looking at investments here to benefit those communities. So we're, we're, we're grateful uh, to the president's leadership. The second piece of this is uh, the, the, the crisis that we have in front of us around the supply chain. Uh, it's important to note, and I think it's important for everyone to know, that uh, our top priority here at the Port of Long Beach and certainly in Los Angeles is making sure that folks have what they need for their Christmas presents, that people are uh, able to go out to the store and get what they need, uh, and we're getting all of these goods off containers onto the shelves and then out across the country. Uh, we're waking up every single day with that mission in mind, and Senator Padilla, the Department of Transportation, uh, and everyone at the White House, it's an all-hands-on-deck moment. And so we are, uh, quite frankly, in, in, in communication with the Department of Transportation and the White House, I would say, on a daily basis as it relates to, uh, to, uh, to this challenge. And so we're all hands on deck. We're doing everything from allowing cargo containers to stack higher, putting ships out farther away to, to uh, impact air quality, um, and getting more investments on the ground uh, faster. 
I'm about to introduce our, our last speaker. I just want to say um, uh, just, just one thing in Spanish. Que acá en el puerto de, de Long Beach, en Los Ángeles, estamos haciendo todo lo que podemos para que gente esta Navidad pueda comprar lo que necesitan en tiendas para sus regalos, para sus niños, para sus familias. Uh, estamos muy orgullosos de tener nuestro senador acá con nosotros. Está haciendo un, un trabajo tremendo en, en Washington para representar acá los que estamos acá en Long Beach y Los Ángeles. Y estamos todos trabajando acá con la, con la congresista y con toda nuestra comunidad para um, tener soluciones para este, esta situación que tenemos acá en nuestros puertos. Um, and with that, I want to introduce, um, uh, without uh, our, our, our locals and ILWU and the workers, this could not be happening. We're grateful for all of our workers. Uh, uh, Ramon Ponce de Leon heads ILWU, uh, our, 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 one of, one of our, our main locals here, uh, whether it's Local 13 um, uh, or all the, the, the locals that work here and across the country. Um, uh, America's porch are being uh, powered by our, our workers. And so I want to introduce Ramon to say a few words as well. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, we'd like to uh, thank uh, also uh, the Senator for his leadership in coming here in person, along with Congresswoman Baragon, uh, to come here in person and, and really see what's going on with the supply chain, asking questions and finding uh, solutions. Uh, that's leadership, and we appreciate that. Since the inception in 2020, the Longshore Workforce, Class A, Class B, Castle Workforce, the Foreman's Local, and the Marine Clerks, we have not let our foot off the gas pedal. We are continuing to go to work amongst the COVID, the congestion. We've, had, we've incurred 22 active deaths since the inception of COVID in March of 2020. We continue to show up day in and day out. We average over six. We average over six days a week working. That is time away from family. We're double shifting, and we're continuing to work to put this cargo through. We have a vested interest. We are grandparents. We are fathers and mothers. We have children. We have people that need uh, the same supplies any other person needs in America, and we understand the needs of America to push this cargo through. Our part is to make sure that this is a fluid operation. Early in August, we immediately sat with the employers and expedited a process to have qualified crane operators for the delivery of cargo, which is in place. 250 skilled operators have been put in place since then. We're going to continue to make those changes in our collective bargain agreement in between whatever it is. We'll put things aside and, and do what we need to do. And just for the record, that we've always been able to work a third shift, which is the 24-7. Uh, the That's in our contract. All we had to do is say, have the employers order us, we'll be there. Come pick up the cargo, we'll deliver it. And the last thing I would like to say is God bless America. God bless everybody that is putting their hand to the task here to make things happen, to relieve the congestion. We feel it the same way any American does. We're Americans working for America. Thank you. Thank you, Ramon. And uh, with that, uh, we'll open up to questions. Yes, sir. Hold it. Representative right there. If we were told that there was a strike on government, we the workers here at the So could you address that also? Sure. Could you address for the folks who are watching at home that may not understand supply chain, the folks who are dealing with gas that's approaching $5 a gallon here in Southern California, how is it that, that they're supposed to understand what's, what's going on exactly here? Because we're not seeing ships moving and we're not seeing the trains operating. We're not seeing the cargo being taken off these cargo ships. So can you explain to, 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 to the Bank of California what's going on? Sure. The, uh, so let me let me do that part, and then we'll ask uh, the union representative to talk about uh, your other your first question. Um, so, look, there's really two things going on. What's happening to help improve the efficiency uh, of port operations for the long term? That's what we're celebrating through the uh, actions by Congress, the bill that the president's going to sign this coming Monday, and the follow-up legislation uh, that's in the Build Back Better plan. Uh, but I get that. That's for the that's for the future. As much as we can try to accelerate that funding, it'll have an impact starting next year. Uh, but that's not here and now. And so, the big point of today is you see all of us collaborating with one another. It is the federal government. It is state government. It is local government. It's also private sector partners, right? The, the carriers, the the trucking companies, the retailers, etc. Everybody's working together to find ways to expedite the movement of uh, of cargo. Uh, and merchandise, and we're seeing uh, that happen already. 
um, invite one of the port directors uh, to be more specific about, for example, enforcing the rules of fees that uh, uh, carriers pay when uh, containers are sitting on the docks past a certain amount of time. Just sheer recalling that rule and enforcing that rule has dropped the number of containers and the length of time the containers here more than 20 percent. That's both for Long Beach and for Los Angeles, and it's getting better. So long way of saying, look, the, the ships aren't waiting as long as they were just a handful of weeks ago to come into port. The, the containers aren't staying on those ships as long as they were just a couple of weeks ago. So the, the, it is accelerating. The pickup and the movement of cargo is accelerating, but it's a step-by-step -step process. Ramon? He wants to know. Okay. He thought there was a strike going on right now. Oh. I'm going to clarify. Yeah. No, here's what's happened. Years ago, we caught a thing called JIT, which is just-in-time delivery. If you look at the big warehouse stores, that's a retail store and a warehouse. The container is the warehouse. So if there's no place to put all these goods, no land space, they're not going to come pick it up because then they would have to pay the extra cost of land space or the retention of the container, like paying for storage. So it ends up staying here on the docks. The docks are not supposed to be, they're not made for storage. They're made for throughput. So if we continue to, to bog down our ports, we won't be able to move the cargo. It's like working in a place where everything's congested. As soon as we deliver a container, the ship, we load it right back, and then it's congested again. The difference is, in normal times, these freeways would be crowded with trucks, okay? But there's 18,000 trucks in this port that visit our ports. They are here. There's not even a shortage of truck operators. The difference is there's no place to put the imports, imports and the export empties have all shown up here and we have even more empties coming from the East Coast that normally don't visit us. And that has also put a bearing on this. So we've worked, we have uh, our Senator uh, Padilla here, Congresswoman Barigan. We are putting solutions together to make things happen that will relieve the work on the docks. When there's room for us to work, we'll move even faster and more efficient. But right now, the supply chain, everybody, they just wait for that container, they offload it, you go to, say, a warehouse, you look at the shrink wrap, that, was, that shrink wrap wasn't done in a warehouse around here. That shrink wrap was done overseas, it came out of a container, put right on the shelf, and you can, the consumer buys right out of the container, just about. The container has become the warehouse, and there's no place to put all the containers at this point. So those are challenges, but with the leadership, especially with our senator and, and congresswoman, uh, their insights, the leadership from our port authorities and our mayors, we will find solutions, and we're going to continue to move forward to, to do so. And uh, Alex, the ILWU and everybody working under our contract document are also committed to do whatever we need to do to help that. Thank you. We haven't been on strike since 1971. We got locked out in 2002, employees that. There is no strike, no one's stopping work. We're just waiting to go to work. There's nobody visiting at this point. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. That was a long answer. <laughs> there was a question? Sí. <laughs> Right. So before answering, I'll, I'll ask, ask, translate the question, you know, is there a more specific time frame or a date by which we can see uh, the accelerated movement of cargo? We're talking about accelerating, we're talking about accelerating, uh, and so uh, I think the first milestone really starts with Monday when the president signs the measure, the ports of Long Beach and Los Angeles and ports around the country know that relief is on the way and they can count on those resources and kickstart, whether it's the planning process, land acquisition, all the things they need to do to modernize and improve the logistics of their uh, facilities specifically. Uh, and earlier this week, President Biden at a port in Baltimore uh, made uh, announcements of 
further accelerating some of that funding going out uh, so that uh, we benefit from the investments sooner rather than later. So I do think it's a matter of months, matter of, not a matter of years, where we'll begin to uh, benefit from these historic investments. You see, in Espanol. Uh, Uh, yo creo que es solo cuestión de meses, no años, cuando vamos a ver los mejoramientos en los puertos de Long Beach, Los Ángeles, en todas las áreas del uh, país. El primer paso es este lunes que viene, cuando el presidente va a firmar el proyecto de ley uh, que va a entregar un nivel de inversión histórico para los puertos de nuestro país. Uh, el presidente también hizo un anuncio esta semana, en martes, uh, en el puerto de Baltimore. Uh, cuando se aprueban los, los fondos, hay modos de acelerar la entrega de esos uh, fondos a los estados, a los puertos uh, del país. Y los puertos ya tienen sus planes, ya tienen los proyectos en mente. Cuando saben que pueden contar con esos fondos, esos fondos que van a abrir, pueden seguir con, uh, uh, o, o consiguiendo uh, más terreno para poder ampliar los otros proyectos que ya tienen en mente para modernizar los puertos. Gracias. Next question. All right. Last question here. Anything you say about the oil spill? I believe that an anchor from one of the cargo ships hit a pipeline out here, 25,000 gallons of oil spill. Okay, well, and we'll take this as the last question. It's not exactly shipping related, but yes, uh, the, the recent oil spill. No, I hear. Right. No, I mean the movement of cargo, the, the theme of today, I should say. Sorry, yes. I know that's one of the theories. <clears throat> so, uh, yes, I was out here uh, just uh, several weeks ago, as you recall, uh, taking a tour of the recent oil spill uh, off the coast of uh, Huntington Beach. Um, the, the cleanup uh, seemed to be a tremendous success. Uh, when I was here, we heard the state attorney general open an investigation. So you now have uh, federal and state and some local investigations that are ongoing uh, to uh, get to the root cause of the issue. So I don't want to get ahead of those investigations and any discipline or accountability that will come from those. I do think the fact that we're able to anchor ships further offshore is really a win-win, right? It's not just the uh, air quality, environmental impacts of some of the surrounding communities that will benefit by any emissions coming from those ships that are waiting to come into port uh, being further away, uh, but also any uh, danger or risk associated with anchors, uh, uh, oil production infrastructure that's uh, underwater right now, uh, it should uh, hopefully prevent some of those concerns as well. No, I think, uh, we, again, we, we, with the planning and information technology that exists already, uh, when uh, the port is almost ready for yet another ship to come in, the word goes out uh, you know, in, in uh, proper time so that it doesn't slow operations down here, just keeps it safer for everybody. Congresswoman. Um, I, I, just want to, um, I just want to remind everybody that our infrastructure has been broken. We haven't invested in infrastructure in a very long time. And so when you talk about COVID and what was happening during COVID, we had warehouses in Asia starting to shut down. Um, that's when the supply chain issues really started because of the pandemic and because of COVID. And so what we have been left with, uh, with the Biden administration on day one said, we are going to have to invest in infrastructure. We've got to get this done so that we can get the supply chain moving like it should be. And so these investments in the infrastructure bill are meant to get that supply chain moving faster, whether it's rail and updating that infrastructure and it's moving goods, which is why it's so important. And so I just want to remind people that uh, this is something that started during the pandemic because of the situation and because of our lack of investment in infrastructure for so, so very long. And so thanks to the president, stepping in and saying we are going to start 24-7 operations and thanks to this president who said we are going to work to get back to make sure we pass this infrastructure bill is why we're able to look forward into seeing the progress that uh, that we're going to make and that i believe is going to make a difference the last thing i want to quickly mention is that president biden um, has directed the federal trade commission uh, to strike back at those that are price gouging 
and pandemic profiteering while the administration continues to work to lower energy prices. So these are things that are being addressed by this administration, things that we support. And with that, I just want to, to thank everybody again today for their participation. Thank you, Congresswoman. And I'll just say this in, in closing uh, to, to reiterate her point. The, the multiple factors that led to the, uh, uh, the congestion we saw several weeks ago uh, were unprecedented, right? We're just still less than two years into the COVID-19 pandemic. We saw what the impact of COVID was last year between the, the shelter at home orders, uh, the impact to manufacturing abroad and therefore uh, imports, let alone exports. This year, last several months, you know, production came raging back. This year, the economy came raging back. Demand has come raging back. So it's been a spike back up in goods that are trying to not just come into the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, but really around the world. Yet, and this is the biggest point of today, the capacity let on the quality and age of our infrastructure has not been significantly invested in in generations. And so it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that, yeah, we had a, a, ch a choke point here not that long ago. But we're moving where everybody's been flexible from the shippers and retailers and the workforce uh, elected leaders to get the, the goods moving at this critical time period. And the point is, how do we learn from this to better prepare for the future? How do we build better ramp up capacity from an infrastructure standpoint, from a workforce standpoint. Uh, so should similar conditions create a spike in the future, we're better prepared to handle it. But uh, things are getting better. Things will continue to get better. And uh, we're investing uh, significantly for longer term into the future. Thank you all for coming this morning. Stay safe.